There's a lot of abandoned sites throughout New Jersey, but few of them actually encourage exploration as enthusiastically as this spot. Spread throughout a public park are the hints of a once colossal entertainment empire, the ruins of a Warner Brothers safari park called Jungle Habitat. Looking like we'd been wandering the woods living off stray safari animals since the park closed in the 70s, we arrived and began to explore. At first there wasn't much, so we desperately tried to hype what was visible. There's like fences and stuff. Here's some good content for YouTube. We continued to walk, now virtually on top of the Google Maps marker. Supposedly that's the entrance of it. Over there? Here but began to lose hope that any meaningful ruins remained. We began to worry that our video plans would turn into little more than a thorough documentary of every tree in the state. We even took a pause to fly the drone up, searching the horizon desperately for anything that wasn't vegetation, still without luck. We were on the verge of giving up and calling it a night when we had a brilliant idea. On Google Maps, the pin lies by a forest with a recycling plant and small airport nearby. What we realized though was that a massive safari park would have needed a massive parking lot, so we switched to satellite mode, and bingo. After a considerable search, we'd found it. It was a lot more exciting for us in the moment, but essentially we went the wrong way. Yeah. A brief detour took us down an abandoned road towards the parking lot. All right, I mean, it's not a wild zebra, but somebody's walking their dog. Fluffer. Love that. Oh my God, there's a herd. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, look at this. What a dream. <laughs> you always tell there's something abandoned when you see lots of people going. <laughs> After that delightful encounter, the trees cleared and revealed a surreal sight. Yeah, that looks like a big parking lot. Holy guacamole! Tucked away in the thick woods was a huge derelict parking lot. The afternoon spent trekking aimlessly around the woods spurred a disproportionate enthusiasm for the parking lot. I have never seen a parking lot this big. It is crazy. I couldn't fly the drone high enough to see the whole parking lot. And as far as parking lots go, this one was pretty cool. But this excitement was soon outmatched when we found the front entrance. No! No way! Oh my god! Yeah, that's the thing from the pictures! Holy guacamole! This is the picture he was talking about, and this seems like a good time to explain a bit about what exactly this place is. Jungle Habitat was a major Warner Brothers attraction that enjoyed a very short lifespan from 1972 to 1976. A safari park style zoo it featured both driving and walking sections, but was largely focused around the idea of seeing animals roam freely in large open habitats. From day one through its hasty closure four years later, the park was plagued by grotesque stories of accident and ineptitude. Only months after opening, a tourist named Abraham Levy was touring the safari in a taxi cab and rolled down his window for a clear view, at which point he was promptly mauled by two lions. He survived the encounter and helped quell the onslaught of negative press by claiming responsibility for the accident. At a later incident in 1974, a woman was attacked by an elephant who reached its trunk over the fence, lift her up, and bit her. An injury that left her with lasting pain and ultimately resulted in $200,000 awarded in damages. But the stories got even weirder. Throughout the lifetime of Jungle Habitat, local reports were rampant with stories of escaped animals running wild through the surrounding neighborhoods. Locals have reported sightings of kangaroos stomping through the woods as well as a colorful sighting of baboons run amok in a town pharmacy. Although most of these rumors are unsubstantiated, they aren't without some merit. One escape that was confirmed involved two wolves who dug out of their enclosure, though thankfully they were recaptured before injuring anyone. It is also apparently true, although we couldn't find first-hand reports of the incident, that an ostrich escaped for a time as well. With a place as shrouded in myth as jungle habitat, it can be difficult to separate the legend from the truth. Similar rumors of non-native species continue to this day, but they are somehow less disturbing than the verified fact that upon the zoo's sudden closure, over two dozen animal carcasses, including a decapitated elephant, were left unburied beside a disused road to rot for months. 
The abundance of bad press, as well as many local issues with the town, led to the park's closure on October 31st, 1976, which is why we had the opportunity to explore these superb ruins. <laughs> we found it! <laughs> Although, this must have been dumpy even when this place was open, right? <laughs> no way this is like a Warner Brothers quality <laughs> entrance. Right. Like, pick this or Universal Studios. We continued through the creepy murder tunnel and made our first discovery. Oh, there's a building! I can't believe it's here. I didn't think we were going to find it. We wandered around in the woods for so we long. We were so off. What's this house? Is this the ticket booth? Ooh, holy snap! And you don't even have to buy tickets because it's abandoned! Amazing. Here, go and pretend to sell me a ticket. Sir, can I have one ticket to the zoo? Uh, sorry, we're closed. We've been closed for 40 years. Oh. We spent a good while in the grungy booth, one of the most complete ruins that remains in the park, before heading off into the woods to begin exploring. We wanted to find more ruins, but unfortunately the park map isn't much help nowadays. The actual trail map isn't much more helpful, looking like a crayon drawing that even a parent would have trouble being proud of. For reference, we were around here, and the entire parking lot is only this, so the trails are massive. The map should also be taken with a grain of salt. Just because something is marked doesn't seem to correlate with what's actually still there. And some of the things left behind don't make much sense. Like they took the entire exhibit, but they're like, oh, I don't know if we can bring those last two poles. Nah. We wandered deeper into the woods and came across an interesting relic. At first, we assumed it might be the edge of some bygone enclosure, but a closer look revealed that it seemed to be a leftover track. Watching vintage footage of the park later clarified what this ruin was, an on-rails attraction called the Jungle Junction Tram. On the trail map, you can see that this area is still marked as Kids Cut and was all part of the Kids Zoo. Most of the trails fall along the former safari, but after the animal drive through families could park in the huge lot from earlier and stroll around this walkable area. Known as Jungle Junction, it housed a petting zoo, reptile house, and amphitheater where, fun fact, they performed a live show with Bugs Bunny, and the costumed actor was contractually obligated not to lose or gain any weight. This area also featured the Jungle Junction Tram, billed as a chance for kids to drive their own safari truck. It featured a loop that you can still walk around nowadays. Unfortunately, at this point in our adventure, the sun was starting to set and Benji's phone had become so waterlogged with rain that it started to quit on us entirely. So we decided to call it a night. But there is absolutely more to explore. YouTubers continue to find other hidden ruins scattered throughout the park, including dried out pools and this epic collapsed aviary. So there's plenty to see. Just remember to bring an umbrella and maybe a map. Thanks for checking us out. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe for more travel and sweeping histories of anything interesting.